Hi there, my friends. Thank you for tuning in. This is the Entrepreneur Mindset Show, and I'm Florian Lungo, and I'm so delighted to share with you today another one of the 12 entrepreneurial mindsets. Today, we're looking at the abundance mindset. So if you're new to this program, this is a program that we put together when we analyze you know, successful people and successful entrepreneurs. We look at what are those different mindsets, you know, what were those you know, way of thinking, way of approaching situations that those people excel and, and express in, in their lives. And uh, we, we put those into a program. We have 12 of those and we will cover one of, one of each um, every single week. So every single week at 5 p.m., Stockholm time. We're gonna we're gonna talk about one of these one of these mindsets. So this is it. Today we're gonna look at the entrepreneurial mindset of abundance, and I want to share some slides with you. So I'm gonna switch between the slides and the camera, and I hope that you would gonna see my uh, you're gonna see myself and and then the, the slides. And so what is the mindset? I think this is a you know one of the understandings that we want to have before we start and, and go further. So I think a reminder for us is that a mindset is a set of attitudes, beliefs, expectations, you know, about the situation and, and, and an outcome. And if you, if maybe you'll ask yourself, you know, why is this so important? Why, it, why it's important is because, you know, my expectation and, and my, uh, you know, the way I approach a task determines in, in great proportion the result that I'm going to get. So whenever we think about mindset, we think about the way of thinking and, and how I think uh, and, and how I expect the world to operate, how I expect you know the marketplace to be, that will determine the action that I'm taking. So although we're thinking about we're talking about thinking and, and, and mindset, you know, it has a lot to do with results. And if you see the link between you know how you think and, and how you you know, uh, approach a situation and the attitude that you have towards someone or something or, or a situation, if you see all of those things, you clearly see the, the link between how, how you act in those areas and the results you're going to get. So that's why I'm so passionate about mindset. That's why I believe mindset is something that uh, if we are able to improve our mindset, if we are able to improve our thinking, that will be reflected in every single area of our lives. But here we look more on, at entrepreneurship because this is, you know, passion of mine. And, and I think, you know, if if we are putting this mindset into into a business that we have, in, into an idea that we have, we are able to to make a big impact in the world. And that's why I do what I do. So we said mindset is a set of attitudes, beliefs, expectations about the situation and outcome. So we also cover why is this important because... You know, most people would agree that the way we approach a situation determines in great proportion, you know, the the, the results that we're going to get. But at the same time, they're they're not actively looking to to improve their thinking and to improve their mindset because this is hard work and most people don't don't like to do it. So kudos to you for being on this show and kudos to you to say yes to, to this opportunity to be here and, and put it this side this time aside so 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 you're able to really you know think into these strategies and, and think into how can we apply this into your life and to your business. So let's dive right into it. So we're looking today at the abundance mindset and, and, and this is a mindset that we say is moving from competing to creative. You know, we don't want to compete with other people, we want to create and how can we create uh, if we focus on what other people are doing. So from my experience, a creative mindset is a, it, it's a mindset that, that focuses on, you know, if you like, on, on maybe baking more pie. So if you have this analogy with, you know, someone that is afraid of competition or maybe someone that sees uh, the, the marketplace as being, you know, a, a continuous competition, and, and they're looking to, to get a, a bigger piece of the pie compared to someone that, you know, they're, they're thinking, okay, so, so I don't think that there is a limited amount of pie. We could always bake more pie. If you look at those two mindsets, you would see that the one that it, it's, com- it, it's looking at getting a bigger piece of the pie, it, it has a competing mindset. 
So, so we're always focused on other people. We, we focus on what the, the, the competitors are doing. And instead of looking at, you know, the customers and how can we create more value for the customers and how can we, you know, create more, more value, you know, um, to just simply more value. So a couple of things here. So this has been covered by other people in different ways. So this is a quote that I really like by Michael Harris. And, and he says that the origin of innovation and entrepreneurship, it's a creative mindset. And that's exactly what we, we're talking about here. So, so, you know, being an entrepreneur in itself, it's actually, you know, the, the, the basis for entrepreneurship is it, creativity, right? So, so as an entrepreneur, if you look at the definition for entrepreneurship, it's, it, you know, someone that takes something of a lesser value and, and, and puts it in a way that, that it builds more value, right? So, so you take an existing product or service and, and you maybe package it, uh, you, you add on to it, you, you, you transform it to make more value out of it, right? So, or, or you take ingredients like that, you know, they don't have huge value by themselves, but when you put them together, you create more value. So that's, I believe, it, it's kind of the, the basis of entrepreneurship. And, and if we are in, in, in this game together for, for creating value in the world, um, we have to be creative. So, so that's why I believe these, are, this, you know, these things, they are essential to entrepreneurial success. That's why we, we so these 12 mindsets are essential to entrepreneurial success and creativity is one of them. But how can we move away from, from competition? How can we move away from looking at what other people are doing? So that's what we're going to look at today. Another thing that I like here, it's something from, an, uh, an, uh, I think it's not Ayn, it's Annie Rand there. So a creative mind, a creative man is motivated by the desire to achieve, not by the desire to beat others. Think about that. A creative man is motivated not by the desire to beat others, by, but by the desire to achieve. That's a completely different mindset if you think about that. So we're not focusing on what other people do. We don't even care what other people do because what's important is what we do and where we are. And, and I shared this in, in the daily videos that preceded this uh, this lesson that, that you know I, I don't look at a competition the only competition and, and the only comparison that I'm doing is, is I comparing myself with with who I was yesterday or who I was three years ago who I was you know five years ago and if I see an improvement then it means that I'm, I'm on the right track and I'm making progress because you know there will always be someone that is bigger better than you and and comparison it's it's, it's a loser's game right so so we, we call this to be the the, the most dangerous game in the world right so so what that is it, it, you know it's not one of these sports that you might think that that people can can get hurt you know the the most dangerous game in the world it's comparison that's the most dangerous game in the world because when we compare ourselves uh, with, with other people there is only two things that could happen so number one what could happen when you compare yourself with other people is that you could compare yourself with someone that is way, way behind you. And because they are behind you, you say, oh, well, I'm not that bad as they are. And so you become complacent and you don't grow. Or the other thing you could do inside of comparison, you can compare yourself with someone which is way, way ahead of you. And in that case, you say, well, I will never be able to be like them. I will never be able to reach that level of income or sales, whatever it is that you're comparing to. And so then, then what happens is that you become discouraged and you don't even try. So comparison, it's a loser's game. There's no way for you to, co to, to, you know, to win that game. And when, when someone says that they want to be you know, best at this or, or, or best at that, you know, I, I get that. You know, there is, you know, competitiveness is, is something that, uh, you know, motivates people. And, and I get that. But, but there, there is a limit to that. And it's also something that you have to be aware of. Because if your goal is to be the best in this or the best in that, there will always be someone, you know, that you're comparing yourself with someone. But if you want to be the best version of yourself, right? This is why, that's why I like this motto. This is, this is how I sign my, my emails. This is my motto. This is the name of my company. Become your best version. Because there is no competition there. You know, be yourself. No one can tell you you're doing that wrong. So 
looking at this from, from a, a little bit of a different perspective, we don't want to compare ourselves with other people because this is what happens. When someone compares themselves with other people, what they say, they actually they are announcing their ignorance to the law of relativity because something, if you take this room, right? Some, is, is this room that I'm sitting in, you know, is, is it big or small? Well, in, in order for us to answer that question, we need to compare with something, right? So if, if I think about this hotel room compared to the bathroom next to it or, or part of it, well, this is bigger, right? And, and the bathroom is smaller. But, but if I compare this room with the conference room, which is downstairs, then this becomes smaller. So in, in order for us to, 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 you know, to compare, we, we need to have a comparison. And, and someone needs to be the judge, really, right? To say this is small, this is big, right? And, and, and no one can be the judge in your life. You're the only one who says this is important for me and this is not important for me. And if it's not important, then you don't even you know, look at what other people have in those areas. But there is, there is this law of relativity that we need to be aware of. When, when we compare ourselves with other people and we compete ourselves with other people, you know, there, there is always, there is always you, know, a, a, you know, a winner or, or a few winners and, and, and many losers. And that's not what we want. When you are in business, when we are in business, we don't want to create this loser-winner game, right? We don't, we don't want that because the only way for me to, to, to win is, is that you need to lose. You know, for, for the only way for you to win is that someone else needs to lose. And, and, and then things are not like white, black, and white like that. It's, you know, all type of shades of, of, of gray. So let's look at this slide here. So when, when it comes to the law of relativity, we know that, you know, um, when we compare with ourselves with other people, there will always be something, someone that, that's going to be bigger than us. So let's take this little box and, 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 and you know, Play with the same analogy that we just we just had with my room here, right? So is this big? Is this box you know small or big? Because because you know in order for us to answer that we need to compare it, right? So so this small this this box might be big or might be small, but then we need another box. So we we just take this box. When we take this box here, now we can compare it, right? So the first one it's actually smaller than, than the second one. And, and from the second box perspective, well, that, that's bigger, right? So depending from where you look at things and, and who you compare yourself with, uh, you, you could find that you're, you're you know, ahead or, or behind someone if you compare yourself with someone else. And then, well, this, this box, the second one here, might think that, well, I'm, I'm, I'm big box, right? But what if... What if they find out that there is a bigger box? And now when they compare themselves with, with this one, well, from the middle on, on to the right here, well, this is this is a small box, right? And from this perspective here, we might think this is a big one. And, and, and what if there is an even bigger box that all these little boxes are into? So that's why we are not able to you know, win this game. We will never be able to win this game because there is always going to be there's always going to be someone bigger and better, right? So, so um, none of these little boxes here, if you if you like to to keep the analogy, none of them were able to win because there was always going to be someone bigger and better than you. So that's why I believe comparison it's a loser's game. So we don't want to get into that game at all. We just want to focus on what it is that we want to do, creating more value instead of extracting more value from the marketplace, because that's one of the, think about that, you know, someone which, which is focusing on competition, uh, is focusing on, and you say, this is the, the, the pie, right? And I'm focusing on getting a bigger piece of the pie. So I'm, get, I'm focusing on extracting more value from this, you know, finite market share, you know, or, or market, right? But if you think about a, a creative mindset, you know, they don't think about it, there is a limited market. It may, might be a limited market, for what you're offering right now, but nothing stops you into creating more values, new new products, new new services, uh, and in getting into a new market where you know you have no competition, right? and and you don't even care about the competition. Well, they are busy competing for that pie. You bake another pie. So how can we get out of that you know comparison game? How can we you know win at this comparison again? And 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 this is 
how you know Airbnb, Uber, Netflix, you know Spotify did. Instead of them focusing on getting a bigger piece of the pie, what they've done, they're bait, they bake another pie. So think about Airbnb, for example. So I'm I'm here in a hotel room, right, somewhere in Sweden, and um, think about that. So this hotel has this building that needs to be, you know, maintained, has the staff that needs to be paid, you know, have all, all, all the costs associated with, you know, owning the real estate and, and also having employed the staff. Well, hotels in this city here were, um, you know, competing with each other to get a bigger piece of the of the pie of the share. So if you think about that, you know the number of of, of hotel nights in in this city, it's you know it's you could think it's finite, right? So it's just how many it's just that many people can can travel to this city at one time, right? So what the hotels are doing, they're trying to compete, you know, for this share here of, of that pie. You know, with, with trying to keep their cost low, right? Because, you know, think about that. They have all of these overhead, so they need to compete there. And and while they're doing that, and they're focusing on this, poop, here comes Airbnb. And they say, well, you know what? There are people that want to rent their, their homes and their houses, and they don't know how, and they don't have access to a network of, you know, of qualified clients. Why don't we create this, this you know, app and this network? So what they've done is they came with a completely different value stream for the end consumer that completely, you know, by, bypassed the hotels, right? And then, and, and like, all, all these, you know, big websites like Expedia and, and Booking.com that, that you could use for, for, you know, to look for, for a hotel room that, you know, they, they win from getting that, um, you know, commission on, on everything that goes to them. All of that, you know, value chain has been bypassed by Airbnb. So they created value out of nothing, if you think about it, right? Think about Uber. Same happened with Uber, right? So when, when taxi companies, they, they have cars, they own cars, they, have, they employ people, they employ drivers, they need to think about, about all of those costs and they have all of, all of that you know, overhead cost, if you like. Uber said, oh, well, they have, we have people that want to earn a little bit of extra money on the side. They have a car they want, they don't use it 100% of the time, they are willing to do that. So, so they create a completely different you know, value stream. Think about Spotify, right? People were buying CDs and think about, uh, you know, the, the AirPod as well, right? We were listening to cassette and CDs and, and those portable devices, for those of you who, who remember that. And now they came with this little device where you have your MP3 music on, on it. And now Spotify, you don't, you don't buy music anymore. I mean, who buys CDs anymore? I mean, where do you listen to a CD? This computer has no CD, right, CD reader and, and not, not, neither the car. So you just kind of plug in the, uh, a USB stick or maybe you have, um, you have, you have or your app connected to your phone and you listen in, in, in the car speakers. So all of these are examples of businesses that created a different pie. While, you know, part of the, the, the industry was focusing on getting a bigger piece of the pie. And they created, a, a, you know, a, a, a bigger pie somewhere else. And, and this is, you know, this is one of the, the dangerous of, of this, you know, scarcity mindset, thinking that you could just, you know, sit on the resources that you have and you don't need to take risk and, and you just, you know, um, you know, use what you have until it, it, it's, it's over or you hope that will not be over be, before you, you're over. And this is, again... The, 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 the challenge is for someone with a s- scarcity mindset is that they believe that, that we live in a world with limited resources. And, and I share this example of you know, thinking that you could, you could actually get in a situation when you run out of oil, right? Um, well, I'm of the belief that we will not run out of oil because before we run out of oil, we will have you know, other technologies that will allow us to, to travel and to move around that would, would not require oil. Think about that. You know, the Stone Age ended not because we ran out of stones, but because we, you know, we evolved and we developed and and we created new ways of, of, you know, um, using different materials and we improved. So now, 
you know, I wouldn't bet on, on the idea that you we will run out of oil. No, I don't think we'll run out of oil because before we run out of oil, there will not be a need for oil. Think about all the electrical cars. Now we're looking for other type of materials in the earth to, to create batteries because that's now the, you know, the... The bottleneck into the uh, you know into the electrical vehicle or electrical transportation is, is now the material for the battery and the capacity for the batteries and that's that's too expensive at this at this stage to you know for mass production we already have a lot of you know elect pure electric cars but think about that we will not run out of oil because we will have moved uh, to a different uh, technology before that happens so I think. One of the, the quotes that actually illustrate this very well is this by Marianne Williamson, who says that the key to an abundance mindset is meeting limited circumstances with unlimited thoughts. That's exactly what, what we want to look at. And, and as I said, we, we, we don't want to look at other people. We want to just, you know, learn it for ourselves and, and be ourselves. Because it doesn't even matter where, where other people are and how did they got there. What's important is how we will get it and how we will get there and how we will learn it. And I shared this example of me when, when I first kind of got the awareness that I want to have $1 million. This is what I, it was my financial goal, right? So I thought about that, you know, for, for a while. And I was trying to, you know, I, I was working on that goal and I'm still working on that goal. I'm, I'm not yet, you know, this is not, you know, I have not yet reach that goal but i changed the goal on the way because at the very beginning my goal was to make the money right but in the process i realized that actually the goal is not to make the money because there are so many you know wealthy people that they are not able to tell you how they got there they, they got there they are they are what we call to be in unconscious competent so they are not conscious they are not able to, you know, break down the model and say, okay, this is how I've done it, so I can do it again. No, they just got there. They don't know how. They're not able to, to pass on that knowledge. Well, when, when I learned that, I realized, oh, well, then my goal is not actually to, to get there, but to learn how to get there, right? Instead of me, ha you know, making $1 million, it's for me to learn how to make the million. Because then if I want two, then I just need to duplicate that again. If I want 10, I need to do that 10 times. So that's a difference there between, you know, getting something, getting somewhere, you know, that being your goal. And honestly, that, that's never your goal, right? Because the goal is not to get something. The, the, the goal is to become someone in the process. So, so I, I kind of changed the goal from getting there to learning how to get there. So I can go there whenever I want it. So that's kind of, again, one of these mindsets that, that we invite you to make. And, and, and over the next now few minutes, we're going to look at some of the shifts, right, that, that you would want to make and, and what, what's the difference between these two, these two mindsets, okay? So the first one here is, you know, the scarcity mindset actually, you know, focuses on, on um, limitation. They, they think oh, there will never be enough. That's why there is called scarcity, right? So, so that, that the dominant vibrational frequency is that of scarcity and, and, and lack and 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 we always need more right well the abundance mindset thinks oh there will always be more and there will always be enough and we can create you know uh, more I I if we need to right so that's kind of the the you know the, in, in big lines this is where we want to be right and now let's look at some some differences I found something really interesting by um, from, from a website, you know, happyhealthycaregiver.com. And this is really nice for me. So, so think about an abundance mindset and a scarcity mindset. And look at, the, you know, the elements on the screen here, right? So, for example, an abundance mindset complements people while other people criticize, right? So have a sense of gratitude where, where a scarcity mindset, you know, have a sense of entitlement. You know, I'm entitled, right? Uh, you know, the, someone with an abundance mindset forgives others, right? Give other people credit for the victories. Do not take credit for their victories, right? You know, accept responsibilities for their failures instead of blaming others for their failures. You know, read every day compared to watching TV every day, right? Sounds familiar? You know, keep a journal rather than, you know, say they keep a journal but they really don't, right? <laughs> this is something that, oh, I know, I, I journal, I journal. I, okay, sure, I, I, I believe you. 
but not today. Talk about ideas compared with, you know, uh, fearing change and talking about others, right? You know, um, they, 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 they keep a to-be list, right? If you see that, they, they, they keep a to-be list, not a to-do list. That's the difference, right? I just share. So we don't want to have something. We don't want to do something, but we want to become someone. All that we're doing right now with improving our mindset is it's towards becoming someone, not getting something, right? So that's that's interesting, right? So so again, they share information and data, and data uh, compared to others that just you know um, operate from a transactional perspective and, and and you know hold on to information, right? They embrace change, the abundance mindset, uh, and, and people that are are you know expressing this one continuously learn, keep a to do project list, and operate from a transformational perspective compared to other people that uh, you know n- maybe never set goals or or they they hope that other people fail and and um they don't really know what, what they want and who they want to be so these are some of the differences between the two mindsets and and then let's look at the, a few shifts that we could make right so what can we do how can we make the abundance mindset shifts i i love this wording mindset shifts right so let's look at it. Someone with the scarcity mindset, you know, would would do would do would be stingy with with knowledge, contacts, and compassion, right? So so we want to make the shift from being stingy with knowledge, contacts, and compassion, and, and and holding on to that to being happy to share knowledge and contacts and compassion, right? So when you meet someone at the networking event and 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 you know they're opening their you know their agenda. For you, they're opening their, you know, contacts for you. They're sharing, you know, who who do I know that you should know? Well, that's a sign that they they express this abundance mindset compared to someone who says, well, um, who do you know that I should know? Right? They they ask, you know, um, who 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 how can you help me instead of saying, uh, you know, how can I help you? It's a different mindset, right? So this is the first shift. Now the second shift is from defaulting to suspicion and being hard to build rapport with to defaulting to rapport and build building trust easily and and i remember a time in my upbringing when when i was in 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 college and and the way you got ahead in college was that it was a limited amounts of scholarship at, at the top of the class and there were also a limited number of of um you know if you like subsidized uh, you know places in the university. So if if I was not you know top twenty percent of twenty percent of the list of, of my class, then then I would have to you know to pay a scholarship, a tuition actually. Instead of getting a full uh, scholarship, I would have to pay one. So of course there was a competition then, and I remember that we were actually uh, you know the the default reaction was oh, I don't trust you because maybe you want to take advantage of me you know I I I I would attend the class I would take notes and and then I would share those notes with other people but when when I ask you know can you pass me on your notes they wouldn't want to pass me on their notes and so I started to develop this kind of scarcity mindset and I was thinking well maybe people do not have my best interests and and it took me a while until I be I was able to trust people again because of that experience. So so it might be that you have an experience in the past that actually determines the way you see people. Uh, but we don't want to let that unchallenged, right? So the next one here is moving from resenting competition and making the pie smaller to welcoming competition and making the pie larger. So everyone wants to grow, right? And, and again, trying to to get by with less than expected, you know, compared to looking for ways to give more than expected. I mean, think about that. You know, trying to get by with less than expected, now, like like kind of negotiating the price for their goals and for their dreams, right? Compared to being, you know, happy to pay the price for their goals and dreams. That's a completely different mindset. So I know for me, in order for me to get what I want to be, I need to go through this process and I'm happily paying the price. I'm happily, you know, sitting here in this hotel room instead of going out and taking a walk in the in the city here. I'm creating content. I'm with you. Why? Because I know there's a price and I'm willing to pay that price. Again, next one. So they are pessimistic about the future and then they believe they are 
the tough, tough time are ahead of us. Well, someone with the abundance mindset, they, they are optimistic about the future and, and, and they expect that best it, it's yet to come. Again, you want to move from thinking small and avoiding risk, which is a sign of scarcity mindset, to thinking big and embracing risk, which is one of the you know abundance mindset. And and we would have you know one of the, the next uh, the, the next mindset that we'll talk about next week is is the courageous mindset. You know that that's you know the the risk taking mindset. How you know how can we you know courageously take action towards our goals. I, I, I cannot wait to share that with you. And the last one here is it's this scarcity mindset of you know being entitled and, and, and fearful to thinking that um, you know you 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 know you deserve it. That's kind of today's today's you know um, youth unfortunately because of social media influencer they think Things are are they are entitled and and they deserve things and and if parents do not do a good job to actually you know help this youth to actually you know be grounded and understand that not all things are entitled and and they are not entitled because because you are entitled and and when when you you know leave home and you you know you, you go out in the in the real world and 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 people do not you know offer you what you've been given at home or in your little circle of friends what do you do then then you become fearful so being entitled and 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 fearful it's it's again a sign of scarcity well in, in an abundance mindset would be well i'm thankful for what i got i'm i'm confident i will get more right so what we're looking at here, it's actually a mindset, it's a mentality, right? It, it, it's a way of thinking. So, so when you think about, you know, abundance and scarcity, I, I would choose abundance every single day. The challenge is that we are not naturally, you know, may, maybe we have never been into an abundant, you know, environment. And I know how I grew up in, in the countryside Romania, in the post-communist Romania. We, we, we never talk about abundance at our kitchen table. The discussion was about, you know, lack and limitation. With You know, that other people had more, that the rich people, you know, got rich by taking advantage of other people. And that, you know, we, we don't have enough. And, and so that was, you know, the scarcity mindset was kind of programmed into my mind in my early years. And, and so that's why I believe that now, now it's our responsibility to challenge some of that programming that has been put in our mind and replace those beliefs with better serving ones. So that's why I'm doing what I'm doing with you here. And, and, I'm, and I'm so delighted that, that you are with us today. And, and I'm looking forward to share more on, on the next show. So kind of to close this lesson here, I want to share this quote by Stephen Coy. He says that an abundance mentality springs from an internal security. An internal security. Not from external rankings, comparison, opinions, position, or associations. Think about that. An abundance mindset springs from internal security. Not from external rankings, comparison, opinions, positions, or associations. I believe that's so, so good. Because so many times we look for acknowledgement and, and, and value outside of us. Well, this abundant mindset actually comes from inside. So this is an inside work. This is a new and new work. And and I know I, I know so many of us, you know, struggle with this because this is not something that we naturally develop. And, and most of us, um, we have not been raised in, in that abundance mindset. And we didn't have parents that, you know, learned this to pass it on to us. I know I, I didn't. So so that's why we we created this program, and that's why uh, I'm coaching one-on-one -on -one entrepreneurs through these mindsets. Because really, if we are able to work on this, and if we are able to just one or two percent improve your thinking, is that like this, you know, glass ceiling that we hit sometimes? It's just getting higher and higher. So it's more room for growth for you and for your business and for your team. So that's why I'm so delighted that you're here with us today and I look forward to share with you more. So these are the 12 different mindsets that we're going to cover on the next weeks. And today we, we, we look at the abundance mindset. Next week, 